Hello and welcome to the program that takes you on a ride in 25 minutes to seek out innovation and creativity that are unique to Africa. On this week's edition, Rev Up Women Initiative empowers female entrepreneurs by providing them with the tailored support needed to thrive in their respective industry. Also, watch out for my conversation with Adora Wodu, founder of NextSkill, and she will be talking about how cloud computing is evolving with emerging trends. We'll give you more in a moment. This is Tech Trends, and I am Olayemi Utunuga. Cloud is so important because it enables digital transformation. It underpins disruptive new technologies in social, mobile, and analytics, and it is enabling industry leaders to compete in digital. Innovation is happening in the cloud, and cloud gives companies the speed and flexibility to be much more agile. Investor is with the money. It's a vibrant gathering of female visionaries, entrepreneurs, and change makers all coming together for the Afri Labs Rev Up Women Initiative Business Showcase, a program dedicated to propelling women led startups and SMEs to new heights. But they are not just celebrating businesses, they are also celebrating the incredible women behind them. We're looking at the report uh, on investment in 2022 and we're very excited. Oh my God, $4 billion, you know, that was invested into African startups. Well, let's look at the women numbers. And they were like 3% only, you know, of that number that was women, what, like the investment that was given to women. That is a challenge. We are women, we're in the ecosystem. And the interesting thing is that you know, when I, when I go to meetings, we're in the tech space, right? I, almost 80% of my meetings are filled with women. You know, women are actively working, setting up these programs. But the women businesses are suffering. So we thought of setting up a program that does two things, right? One is to build the capacity of women to be able to set up their businesses, you know, uh, their structure to function, as a woman, I mean, you're not going to change the principles, but you're going to be aware that these are the things that you're going to be asked or they're going to be looking at investors. So you're going to set up your structure to be able to, you know, answer some of those questions. But uh, most importantly, you know, unlock financing for women. You're very, very, very welcome. The women also receive a dose of motivation from a leading entrepreneur who highlights the importance of investing in women. Despite the incredible potential and talents that women possess, we are still facing significant challenges in accessing resources and opportunities, some of which are limited access to capital, technology, and business support, as well as gender discrimination and lack of support networks. Our inability to take full advantage of networking opportunities due to perceived cultural biases and restrictions is another factor that greatly hinders our success. Yet, in spite of this, female-led startups in Africa are not only as profitable, if not more, than male-led startups, but also drive women's empowerment and positive social impact on the continent. So closing the gender gap and empowering women-owned businesses will play a pivotal role in shaping a more vibrant and equitable society in Africa and across the globe. From a riveting panel discussion titled Trailblazing Women, Navigating Challenges and Triumphs, inspiring stories are shared, staring the women in the room. Inclusion looks to me like a coming together where when we really want accelerated progress, we have to be builders, and not just builders on that scale of nano and small micro businesses, but builders on the scale of bigger institutions and bigger corporates, so that we can really influence and drive change. And that, of course, looks like a coming together where we bring the skill sets of generations, the skill sets of the different um, life cycles of our businesses, 
and of course the um, ideas and variants of industry to come together and really build um, sustainable businesses. When you ask me what economic inclusion and empowerment looks like for women, it will be doing this to, with 10,000 women. It will be teaching them to start a business. It will be teaching them to make that business make money. It will be teaching them to put in the structures so that it will make money for them in the long term. It will be teaching them that when you've made the initial money, you invest it in something that continues to make more money for you. And so we have to be very intentional about shouting about women's successes, women's failure, failing forward. I don't think failure is the end of things. I think failure actually sets you up for the success and the bigger successes that we can get. So we need to shout about, I keep saying, you could find somebody in this room who has the cure for cancer, but if they don't shout about it, then the cancer remains uncured, right? So we need to really shout about the successes that we have so that um, another person who didn't think that their story could lead to a success um, can see themselves in, in you. As the spotlight shines bright on these entrepreneurs, the aim is to let their achievements serve as a beacon of hope for future generations of women entrepreneurs. Mariam Ibrahim is getting ready for work, breaking grounds and combating gender stereotypes in Borono State. As one of Northeast Nigeria's few female borehole engineers, she helps to build and fix boreholes to help combat the water crisis in the community. She explains that her community and parents are welcoming of her career choice and journey. <laughs> When I started borehole repairs, I didn't experience any challenges. The people in my community are acquainted with me, and my parents did not refrain me from my passion. They support my kind of work. Although her profession is male-dominated, Mariam encourages other women with the passion to get into the work. She says she has never experienced gender bias with the men in her field. Yes, it's true. It's a male-dominated job. But what a man can do, if a woman develops that interest or passion, she will do better. If she's committed, it won't be difficult. I believe it's not a difficult work, honestly. And I've never experienced gender bias with the men, even my colleagues who are all men. Mariam has been building and fixing boreholes for the local community for six years. She now serves as an inspiration for other women looking to pursue similar work in the community. Some of the women have shown interest in doing a similar work. They even asked me to call them anytime I have a repair to do and they will join me. Anyone who helps fix boreholes for people, it's like giving them water. The economical situation we are in right now is a challenging one. If a woman can engage in a business or job to support herself, I encourage her to do it. According to the World Bank, Nigeria currently faces a water and sanitation crisis. Around 70 million Nigerians do not have access to safe drinking water and 114 million lack access to basic sanitation facilities. Did you know Nintendo started as a playing cards company? Nintendo's story began in 1889 as a playing card company long before they made video games. Playing cards were popular at the time and Fusajiro Yamauchi, a craftsman, founded a company as Yamauchi Nintendo, headquartered in Kyoto, Japan. 
Initially, Nintendo focused on producing handmade Hanafuda playing cards, which quickly gained popularity and established Nintendo as a top gaming company in Japan. In the 1960s, Nintendo expanded into the Japanese toy industry. However, in 1975, Nintendo made its first foray into the world of video games, developing and distributing its own games and consoles. This effort began with the color TV game systems in 1977, followed by numerous handheld LCD games. Inspired by its early successes, Nintendo released its first multi-cartridge gaming system in 1983, featuring the iconic game Super Mario Bros, which became a monumental success. Since then, Nintendo has consistently produced some of the most successful consoles in the video game industry. What commonplace medical device is a plunger attached to the cylindrical tube, allowing for even intake and discharge of fluids? It gets its name from the Greek word for tube. Options Needle Tube Syringe Condry And the answer is syringe. Douglas Engelbart was the inventor of what computer accessory? The first one was made from wood. Options Mouse Keyboard Cable Monitor And the answer is mouse. What is the sizzling name of the proprietary computer boss and power connector that has been used to charge and connect Apple mobile devices since 2012? Options Charging Cable AirPods Lightning Answer Lightning The first compact disc was created in 1982 by Sony. What electronic brand is known for originally selling light bulbs and was founded by Jared Phillips? Options Cree, Phillips, Arc Lighting, Sylvania. And the answer is Phillips. Imagine if you could access all your files, photos, and software from any device anywhere in the world without needing to carry around a bulky hardware or worry about losing data. Well, that's essentially what cloud computing offers. It's like having a virtual storage space and computer all rolled into one. And thanks to emerging trends like edge computing, artificial intelligence and the likes, cloud computing has now evolved into a dynamic platform with advanced computational capabilities. Adora Wodu, the founder of Nexascale, who is also a software engineer working at the intersection of cloud engineering and developer platforms, tells more about cloud computing. Adora, break it down for us. What is cloud computing all about? Um, cloud computing, I think I'm just going to try and explain this in the most basic way possible, right? You think about it like this. Um, the cloud is 
a network of computers that someone can access over the internet. Now, that, those computers are like actual compute infrastructure when you think of storing data, when you think of computation power, like maybe if you are a gamer and you want to do some complex computation, you know, on these computers, that's the, you know, then you have to do it on the infrastructure. Then there's like the platform level, which is supposed to be an abstraction over the infrastructure, right? Where you can also do things like automate the delivery of these infrastructures if you need them. For example, I need to have virtual computers i'm trying to use the most basic words <laughs> possible i need to have virtual computers to do certain things and i want to get you know computing from these cloud providers and use them and i can use like and i can get like a platform for that and then software as a service is the one where everybody can use it's pretty much like just going online and using the software um examples are like maybe your notion um your microsoft office that you use on the cloud your google meets for example when you're doing all of these like you know video conferencing conversations and things like that so the cloud isn't just for storage many people use the cloud to store their information you know so that it can persist and they don't have to lose the information and they can access it across different devices. But you can use the cloud for other things as well. Okay, and there you, you know, tried your best to explain that in you know, the most basic <laughs> form. But as someone who's, you know, you're a software engineer um, that's had experience working in that sector, and you've likely, you know, witnessed firsthand the rapid evolution of cloud computing. What are some of the most, you know, exciting advancements you've seen recently? I think for me, one of the most exciting advancements I've seen is computing on the edge, not necessarily the cloud. I mean, like, you know, the cloud is great. There's like, you know, different data centers across different parts of the world. But edge computing is more around bringing those data centers close to you to reduce, you know, latency so that computation is done faster. And since now we're about to start, in the context of technology, we're about to start doing things that have like very high, um, very high computation, processing like large amounts of data or large amounts of um, information. And we need those things to like be done relatively quickly. Um, so ed doing things on the edge or rather edge computing is still like, you know, when you think of, I don't want to call it remote computing, but let's call it that. When you think of like, you know, computing over the internet, right? And I think that now there's like, you know, companies springing up and trying to position themselves as computing on the edge and providing solutions for edge computing. But I also see like these big cloud providers also shifting towards building you know allowing people to build things on the edge you know faster things as people are talking about oh, okay there's this whole ai revolution going on or the whole thing about internet of things or the metaverse for the people that are still building in that space right and these are things that have like you know high data being transmitted across you know from point a to point b and you also want to make sure that regardless of the fact that you are transporting a lot of data and you're doing a lot of heavy computing, it's done as quickly as possible and with like the lowest latency possible. And this is where like edge computing comes in. So I think that that's like the next level things in terms of doing remote computing on the internet that would um, that would be very interesting to see, especially because of all these innovations happening around us. So talking about innovation, you've mentioned artificial intelligence. There's, of course, machine learning and edge computing, like you also mentioned. These are, you know, buzzwords in the tech world, uh, which are also being integrated with cloud computing. What would be the outcome of these fusion and cloud-based solutions? Um, I think that the cloud is going to play a huge role in a bunch of things. I mean, like AI is great. If you build a fantastic tool 
if you've not made that tool into a platform where different people now have access to it and can use this regardless of wherever they are in different parts of the world then have you really started building your business right so there's still that intersection of the cloud playing a key role in terms of making these technologies globally available you know deployable to people in different parts of the world um also one thing i really like the cloud for, for is the scalability that the cloud offers um so in times when there's like a lot of things that you're doing um depending on how you've you have like you know your cloud set up and things like that you can scale your cloud resources to act, to be able to take on the current load that you have at that particular time maybe maybe i've i've heard that you know the the time of the year that you know telephones are used the most is mother's day I actually thought it was christmas until recently when i found out that it was mother's day so imagine like on a day like mother's day and you have to scale up resources because there's a lot of people using maybe your platform for calls as well as maybe if you have like an ai platform people are using that ai platform to make cards you know virtual cards for their moms and things like that um you can scale out your you know infrastructure on that day to be able to take on all of that load but like i mean for the rest of the year when you don't have as much load you can now like scale back down so the auto scaling that sort of like you know helps with um the scalability and availability is one thing that i really like the cloud for and i think that as we do more interesting things and sort of like you know build interesting things on the cloud as well we'll be able to leverage these advantages or these benefits that the cloud offers to be able to give different people all around the world that are supposed to be using these softwares good experiences well adara we've spoken about you know you just spoke about the advantages of the cloud right now let's talk about some of the challenges of uh, cloud computing and uh, i'm sure experts say that there's always a risk while storing your data on the cloud but apart from you know that security concern what are some of the other you know biggest challenges you've encountered um honestly i mean like security is a very big one and that's because everyone just assumes all the time that security is supposed to be for the cloud provider alone but like i think we need to get to a point where we teach people that security is everybody's problem right mm -hmm. security is important and everyone should make it you know a key thing that they take on um so meaning that no matter how secure and no matter how many measures the cloud providers have put in place if you as somebody building on top of you know those resources don't secure your application um then your customers are at risk when they use your software because there are things that you should actually do on your own for example if you put in if maybe you use something in the cloud maybe like a secret manager and the cloud provider gives you the secret but when it's time for you to use that secret instead of you know encrypting it or referencing it directly from the cloud provider you put it in your application as plain text now everybody can see it they will hack into that system right and at that point it's no longer you know the fault of the cloud provider it's about you for not using the correct um tools that you should have used to make sure that you were secure and you know compliant with whatever it is that you were building another thing is finances one benefit about the cloud is that it's um like affordable right but that could also be a drawback because the cloud has so many sides to it so if you don't actually sort of like um integrate fin ops and just sort of understand the kinds of applications that you are building right and the kinds of services on the cloud that you should use for those applications you'd find that you are spending a lot more than you should be spending and i've seen people that you know i've heard about people that oh monthly they are spending like 50 something thousand dollars on the cloud and i'm like how much is your business making first of all that you are throwing this amount of money 
into cloud computing, right? Um, it's very important for people to have ways where they can sort of like monitor their cloud spend and just see if even the ways that they are doing their deployments or the things that they are posting their applications on are things that they should be using in the first place, right? Because this really is like one of the issues. Well, thank you so much, Adora Umwodo, founder of Nexus Skill. And of course, I think it's also, you know, nice for me to mention that you're also a first class computer science graduate from the University of Lagos. And you are, you know, one of the few females working in the cloud computing sector. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us on Tech Trend. Thank you. And that's a wrap on the show this week. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you're interested in keeping track of how tech-savvy innovators are crafting homegrown solutions using technology in the country, we'll keep watching Tech Trains because we will continue to showcase them for you, from startups to big techs and, of course, eventful thinkers. Also, if you missed any parts of the show, you can always catch up on the channel's TV YouTube accounts where we have all of our episodes. And I encourage you to watch share and like your favorite editions. For Tech Trends, I'm Olayemi Odunuga. I'll see you next time.